Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the trail. Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity. And today we have um, some information and individual for, that's going to share with us uh, a perspective outside maybe the uh, America and the USA. We're used to talking cowboys and Indians and Western history. And so I am just delighted today that we have John Ferguson, who's a photographer, an outstanding photographer from the UK, who grew up in England. And so maybe has a little bit different uh, perspective about cowboys and Indians. And so very excited to talk with you today, John. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so this will be great. So John was actually one of the very first people <laughs> to do a documentary film for Cowboys of Color Rodeo. So we met a few years ago. And um, so we'll be talking about that project a little bit uh, with John today. And we'll be playing a short clip from that in just a little while. But first, usually on the show, what we do is we talk about a um, a historical legend, and so the historical legend that we want to share today is Jesse Stahl. He was a bareback rider in the 1800s, early 1900s, and I know that John did some uh, interviews with some of our living legends, some of our bareback riders that are riding today, and so we'll talk with him about that in just a minute, but let's watch this video first so that y'all get our historical perspective and then we'll be talking about John and his filming and his experience filming. Jesse Stahl was born in Tennessee in 1883. Little is known about his early years, but he and his brother Ambrose began competing in rodeos in the early 1900s. Stahl started with steers and bulls where he won several competitions, but it was when he and another black cowboy, Ty Stokes, rode a bucking horse back to back in what was called a suicide ride that he found his true event. Considered one of the greatest bronc riders ever, he never was awarded the top prizes in that event. It is widely believed that due to his color and the bias of rodeo promoters that he was seldom awarded first place. Stahl never failed to outride and outshow his competition. In one particular instance, he placed second in a competition that he clearly should have won outright. In a daring and deliberate move, he rode out on the wild bucking horse that had never been ridden. The ride was magnificent and made a mockery of the judges because Stahl broke the horse called Glass Eye while riding it backwards. Although he began roping the year Stahl died, my father, Rufus Green Sr., considered Stahl one of the great black cowboys of his time. It is a shame that he was never given the recognition he deserved when he was living. Just like with my father's profile, I am pleased that people who have never heard of him will learn his history by reading or hearing these stories, said Dr. Rufus Green Jr. Although he retired in 1929 and settled in California, some rodeo enthusiasts consider Stahl the greatest of all bronc riders. In 1979, he was the second African-American inducted into the National Western Heritage and Cowboy Museum Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City following his contemporary and rodeo pal, Bill Pickett. Yeah, so great stories, but like you say, never got the recognition that he deserved because of, you know, his skin color. And so I know uh, I want you to share with us in a little bit, John, about what the bareback riders you talked to did. But first, tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up in England and playing cowboys and Indians, I guess. We all, as kids, we all played that game, didn't we? And I'm, I'm assuming y'all did that too in England. Uh, well, when I grew up in the, in the 70s, uh, late 60s, 70s, um, Westerns were a massive part of my um, uh, education for, on TV. We only had a right. few channels a few channels on TV in England in the 60s and 70s, I think two or three channels, but every channel showed a Western. And right. Right. It, if it wasn't a Western film, it was a Western series like Bonanza, mm -hmm. High Chaparral, 
Right. Um, the whole yeah, lot. The, I mean, all those this, great and, shows. Yeah, yeah Rawhide, like many, all of them. Rawhide, all the, and many I can't remember as well. That have, you know, um, so we our staple dart was westerns basically, but right. and so I knew all the western cowboys, western heroes, along with my friends, and you know we um, we didn't we play cowboy in every day. You know, even at, my my mum even bought me a cowboy outfit uh, for one birthday, so I played with my brother and our friends at school. But uh, one day, I remember one day being told that we couldn't be cowboys because um, there weren't any black cowboys, so we had to be white cowboys. We had better be Indians. Indians, all right. And I and <laughs> and it was like it was like a bolt for me. I thought, oh right, okay. I didn't realize that, you know, you know, young age, kid colors, you, you know, it it skin color doesn't doesn't come into it really. But I was too, obviously right. it was older older kids that were told us that we had to be the Indians because there wasn't any of black cowboys. But you couldn't argue that because we didn't know. You know, we'd right. never seen any black cowboys. So going on 35 years later, as I was sent to New York to do uh, a photo shoot on something or other, I can't remember what it was now, I saw these um, black cowboys parading through the streets of Broadway. Right. And I wondered I wondered what they were doing. I thought, why, are those, black, <laughs> what is why that? are those black guys dressed up as cowboys? Uh-huh. What they do? Are they some sort of circus act, or are they some sort of funny cabaret act? And um, it wasn't until I got back to my hotel that I saw the, the the footage on the TV screen, and they were from Queens. And so I rang them up. I found uh-huh. a journalist. I do. I found out where they were and who they were, and I found, got a number. And I rang them up, and they were like, "Yeah, we're we're, we're paying homage to the first black cowboys. Did you know that the first black cowboys, the first cowboys were black?" Right, right, yeah. So they wanted to play homage to the cowboy legend and keep it going, basically, keep the heritage right. going. And they had right. this stables in Queens at the time in New York. So. Oh, right, right. And that's so how I got a lot on of trail it. rides and things like that, you know, were going on. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, trail rides and things like that. Yeah. There actually was a thing in New Jersey called Cowtown Coliseum, and that was where Cleo first wrote. When he was oh, in the military, right. he would take a busload of guys up to New Jersey and he would compete, you know, because he, it was the weekend and they'd have leave or whatever. And so he would they would pay the bus driver, you know, $50 or, you know, on a six pack or something. Yeah. And then and he would take a busload of guys up and they would pay to get in. And so the uh, the promoters would let Cleo ride for free because he was bringing these guys up every week. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. from uh, from washington dc to see the rodeo you know and so uh so anyway yeah. so they, they've got a big history there and some you know a number of bull riders who came out of there some of those guys went to went to college you know in places like wyoming abe morris that you might have heard of who was a black bull rider and mm-hmm. he's a another rodeo announcer there's only a couple we talked with kevin woodson you know our rodeo announcer a couple weeks ago and uh uh, you mm. know, there's only a couple of black rodeo announcers in the United States and around, you know, basically uh, in the world. And mm. so they are two of those guys. And, and like I say, Kevin was a bullfighter and then a calf yeah. roper. So, <laughs> well, yeah, what, what, what was it like? So what gave you the idea to have the film or produce a film or come and see the Cowboys of Color Rodeo? Did you hear about that from these other guys? No, no, I don't know how I heard about it. It, it took me. From that day in New York, seeing mm-hmm. those cowboys, it, it took me another 15 years before I could go back t- and concentrate on those cowboys alone. Right. I was, yeah. I was, always, I was always working. I was an international working. photographer, so I went around uh-huh. the world for my newspaper in the UK. So right. when I finally decided to give it up and go, go out on my own, my first project was to find these cowboys. So I, right. researched, I researched the cowboys – I researched um, black cowboys in Texas, and somehow I got a name. rang the rang the guy up, and that was Jason actually, and rang Jason right, up, and driven. and and He's he a gave me a good rider. Yeah, champion yes. bareback rider here in the, the yeah, United and States. he he was so accommodating. He picked us up from the airport, me and my colleague Greg, and we went off to um, South Dallas, and he was what um, riding in a rodeo, uh-huh. rodeo color in the Mystique. Uh huh. And that's my that was my first my first rodeo, as they say. Right, and, right, okay. <laughs> great, I was, great. I so, was absolutely blown away by it. It was amazing, amazing. 
Right. So Mesquite was the final. So every year we've done the finals up until the pandemic and the pandemic kind of put us on a little bit of a problem because, you know, they were looking at 25 percent occupancy at first. And that's called bankruptcy in our mm -hmm. business. You know, we need, mm -hmm. you know, 60 or 70 percent because the rodeo mm -hmm. has a lot of cost to it. You know, we've mm -hmm. got stock, we've got labor, we got, uh, you know, ambulance, we got insurance, we have marketing, we, you know, we have to pay for yeah. the building. You know, there's all kinds of expenses related to rodeo that people don't realize. And so, you know, for us, we had to have 60, 70 percent to make any money, you know, 50 cents to break even and then 60 or 70 to make some money for our nonprofit, which is what we were hoping to do. Well, that was great. So, yeah. So Jason Griffin, he is was on the book. So he was the cowboy in the original video that we just showed y'all that was on the front of a photography book because we had a local photographer come out and spend a couple of years with us and did a photo book like a coffee table book. And that was the first photography coffee table book that we've ever had, too. And Jason is on the cover of that because he was still he was still competing at that time as a bareback rider. Today, he's providing stock. So he's providing the wild horses and some of the calves and some of the steers for the rodeo now. So, yes, um, but mm. he's still, he's like a real cowboy. He has the ranch, you know, he has the 10 acres and, mm -hmm. you know, where he has stock and he goes out every day and feeds them and all of that before going off and doing anything else. So, yeah. so that was great. And I know you got a lot of opportunity for him too, didn't you? Just the pictures and just the, the short film that you did, uh, were able to do. Mm, yeah, we got him a lot of um, attention through the work I did. Yeah, Hollywood came knocking on its door. Right, um, right. Um, he's a handsome guy, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's a handsome like guy. And, and well, yeah. well spoken and, and all yeah. of that. And he, he grew up around rodeo, I guess, had some friends that were in the, you know, got in it. And, when he got into high school and so that's how he got in and and you know bareback riding is a little bit different thing they don't have as many schools they don't have as many opportunities especially down here it's it's much bigger up in wyoming and uh, places like that uh, where they do have a few schools but um you know if somebody doesn't want to get on a bull you don't <laughs> want to get on a wild horse either <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta you gotta be about to have crazy to do that. So mm. um so y'all but y'all went out into the, some of the ranches and talked to some of the other cowboys and things too, didn't you? And then we did. Well from from the rodeo, it was a it was a massive it was a it was a perfect um, vehicle for us to find other cowboys. Right. Um there's uh, there, unfortunately there's only a few professional cowboys, but we found those and we uh -huh. found part time cowboys and um and hobbyists. Right. So we had a full range of the cowboy fraternity there with us. And we also went along to other states as well. We went outside Texas as well, went to um, um, okay. Oklahoma. Right. And we went yeah. to Mississippi. Mississippi? Um, yeah, I think so. Probably so. Yeah. We, there, we went there. to six six states around right. Texas. Louisiana, Arkansas, yeah, Louisiana, Arkansas. Louisiana, Arkansas. Yes, we went right. there, yes. Mm -hmm. And a few, other, a few other rodeos around the, in, in uh, other um Louisiana. We went to a radio there as well, which is which is even bigger actually. But it was um, it was yeah, it was a fantastic uh, experience for us. But right. we yeah. we had so time to meet other radios, right? Other radio Penny, riders. And that rodeo is put on by called Real Cowboys, and it's put on by the Frank Penny originally, and he took on it because we didn't do the smaller markets. Most of the markets that we did were in bigger cities like Houston, San Antonio, Austin, but mm -hmm. there were smaller communities and uh, that wanted to have a black rodeo and because we were moving toward multicultural rodeo we handed over mm -hmm. to mr penny to, to mm -hmm. do the black rodeo in those smaller communities and so he took that on and uh, sadly he passed away a couple years ago but i think his son family trails trying to keep it going same thing with the bill pickett rodeo out of california uh, mm -hmm. lisa vasan came along in the 80s after cleo had established the texas black rodeo in texas and um, they began to do some rodeos and, and some of the major black markets across the country and, and Lou passed away and his wife and uh, I guess son or daughter or somebody are still kind of carrying on that legacy. So, uh, and that's why we wanted to have this show. That's why we're having Wild West Diversity because we want to, we want to talk about those historic individuals that never got any recognition and maybe their stories were never even told, you know, or yeah. rarely told. Mm. And then we want to be showing those people that are keeping that legacy alive. Like, you know, we did, they didn't document their history. 
That's no. why we don't mm-hmm. have these stories. They either weren't yep. allowed to read and write or they were not. Mm-hmm. Al- they just didn't tell their stories outside mm-hmm. the campfire or the kitchen table or the community. Yeah. You know, people in the community knew who, who they were, but mm. people outside the community didn't because they, they just didn't, you know, they just didn't write their stories down like, sure. you know, yeah. Europeans did. And so the, the more, the more I looked into it, the more I got, I've got embroiled in the whole story. It, uh-huh. it just got more fascinating and more and more fascinating each time each story right. unfolds and, and new characters, new stories. It's uh-huh. fascinating. The one about the one about the original sheriff, this black sheriff who Right, Bass Reeves, they, who was the black yes. sheriff, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, Marshall they, out of Arkansas Territory. It was and, the Arkansas Territory then. It went into the Indian Territory. So And didn't they model the Lone Ranger from Yes, from uh-huh. Them? Yeah, so well, how, we they... we believe they did. I mean, you know, right. he had yeah. a he had a Indian guide who went with him when he went yeah. into Indian territory. He could go into Indian territory because he was black and not mm-hmm. white. We they were mm-hmm. very suspicious of white men coming in, but blacks and the Indians they were not so much. Mm-hmm. And and he was he often used disguises, not just a mask like the Lone Ranger, but he I would often disguise himself, you know, too and. Um, and he caught, you know, uh, I don't, you know, some kind of record number of criminals and brought them in without ever mm. being shot himself. You know, a lot mm. of the other marshals were killed or on duty in the duty of, you know, trying to capture criminals or were at least shot. And, and you know, he never he never did. And he even the story even says that his son for, you know, went out, you know, and robbed a bank or did something. And he went and got him and brought him back in and <laughs> really? turned him over, uh, you know, turned well, him over because he was such a straight yeah. arrow kind of guy, you know, he been a most of his life. Yeah. But even, but even having a black marshal was something in itself, isn't it? At that time. So that's right. an amazing, amazing story. So, amazing yeah. stories. Well, let's yeah. look, cause you have an amazing film and we're, we're going to watch the six minute promo here and, and then we'll right. come back and talk about that. And you can tell us, you know, about some of those experiences. And mm-hmm. like I say, I appreciate it. I think probably the only time I was in front of the camera besides, besides now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I yeah. think I was tagged at the end, baby. But uh, let's, uh, let's watch this film. This is called The Forgotten Cowboy. And um, beautiful uh, documentary and the promo for the documentary that John and uh, his friend Greg produced. So. States, all that stuff. Wow, I ain't know any black cowboys around, you know. That, you know, what costume do you have on? You don't know. No, it, it's, it's no costume, you know. We for real. It's, it's a lot of them around, and it's, it's, it's more and more of them, you know, coming up. And a lot of them want to be saying, like, you know, say, Mama, I want to be a cowboy. And that's, that's the way it is. And I'm trying to help all the ages and all the generations, you know, to help to get their start. If you didn't know any better, you would think, you know, oh, that's odd for a black guy to be a cowboy. And it wasn't odd in the least bit. Because like I say, out of all the cowboys, one out of every four is a black man. First guy killed in Dodge City, black man. Got hit by a stray bullet. Only known he was buried under the name of Tex. Because he was from Texas. Three-fifths of the cowboys on the Chisholm Trail Drive, African-American cowboys. These are things, if you don't know, you know, they go on unseen. And then you will have black people that believe that that's odd for us to do. No, it wasn't. And then you'll have white people that'll think, that's odd for them to do. No, it wasn't. And that's what this rodeo dispels uh, because people get an opportunity to come here 
and they get chance to see what they don't see often. In this deal, these people are just happy to know that there's very many African Americans that are in the roping business, rodeo business. They're going to see kids in here. They're going to see grown people. They're going to see things, and they're going to be proud that they who they are. I don't care what color you are, and that's what we're doing. We're making the world a better place to live. Well, I've never been to one, so this is my very first one. Warning, warning, these things will kill you. They say it's, it's pretty good, so I'm ready. I'm ready to have some fun. Oh, it's great. Hey, I've been to a couple of them, they great. I stand, you know, hey. Wouldn't miss it in the world. It's virtually impossible to have a true chronicle of the West and not be able to mention some aspect that black people had as a part in it. There always were black cowboys. Even the word cowboy is connected to black people because you had the guy that took care of the horses, the horse boy, the water boy, the cabin boy that cleaned out the cabin. Henceforth, the cowboy. But at the time, it just wasn't a uh, this great, um, you know, fashionable job. It was just what it was, you know, cowboy. There's nothing, any, anything. I've done anything that that's been neater than this. You know, I played baseball, football, basketball, and uh, rodeo was was the, the thing that really I grew. Taught me how to grow as a person. Every weekend I was with some different man riding his horses, getting paid for it, of course. And um, I had a lot of older friends as well as friends all over. So I was always around a strong male presence, role model. And I'm the same way. Don't, don't get it, boy. That's my buddy, though. Don't get no bigger. It helps out a lot because you know, sometimes when you get to pull in your own rigging on your horse, and all that type of stuff, it takes a little bit out of you. So, yeah, a lot of when uh, you have a good friend with you, you know, he can take a little bit of that stress off of you. And especially someone who knows what they're doing, you know. And um, this is the guy who taught me how to ride, so I trust him with everything. Anytime I can grab any younger kid, I grab him because I got horses need to be rode and I got stuff around the house needs to be done. If a child can see somebody that looks like them, then they get, the, they get the imagination to say, hey, if he can do that, I can do that too. And that's why it's really important for them to see a black cowboy or a Hispanic cowboy or an Indian cowboy or even an Asian person because they look like them and then they might want to do that themselves. As they say, that's the way we do it. We want to educate you as well as entertain you. You know, so you're coming here, you say, yeah, it's a rodeo, but the whole idea is you get the understanding that, you know, oh, these guys did this. Because uh, just like a lot of sports and a lot of things here in this country, there was a time when black cowboys couldn't compete in regular rodeos. Well, I don't know how to ride a bucking horse. Never rode in a rodeo. But you're going to want to come back and get some more. And when you do, you come back and look for me. I ride it like a cowboy in a moving picture show. Well, if you don't believe I can ride, as all the women out on Baptist Hill. Well, if you don't believe I can ride, as all the women out on Baptist Hill. Because when they see me coming, they all holler, here come riding Bill. Isn't that great? So that was so yeah. good. Yeah, it's so good. And like you say, there's a there are documentary films, and then there's documentary films. You know, and mm. that's film worthy. So we appreciate it so much because, like mm. you say, that was really the first kind of documented piece that we actually had. And mm. it's just the capturing those stories. You know, it's another reason we're doing this show is because we want to capture the stories. We want people to know. Uh, why do you think it's important, John, for people to hear this history? And this well, it's, it's important for everybody, including um, um, 
uh, other other um, communities other than the black community, it's part of our history. It's part of our heritage. I mean, right. for me, it's an un, as I said, I called it the Forgotten Cowboy because for me, it was an unheard of community that I I was so surprised to see it existed. Right, and, and it's when, a huge and, underground community, I, isn't and it? When I, and when I got to, <laughs> when I got to America, I was so surprised at how many they were, right. how many cow, black cowboys they were, and they they seemed to have this. Um, I seem to there was a stoicism, a stoicism about them as well. They right. kept it quiet. They kept themselves to themselves. They didn't broadcast their their history or the, or their yeah. um, achievements. But it was there to be seen. You know, they've right. been there for over two hundred years. And some of the people we met could trace their family, their lineage back to two hundred years, yeah. which was right. just generations amazing. And generations and mm. generations. Yeah, mm. yeah, for sure. So, I mean. Uh -huh. it's, it's a fascinating subject and still is and st people are still fascinated by it and inter interested by it and st and they still come up to me to say today and say we didn't know there were black cowboys right but right after after the video we shot after the work that i produced for this project uh, a year later it, it seemed to explode it seemed people seem to know more about the black cowboys or want to know more about black cowboys um, right. Celebrities were getting involved. Are getting calls from all over the world, from Australia, Israel, France, saying, "Can we see your video? We heard about your black cab. We've seen the pictures." So, the right, so right. you know, it's it's an interesting tale for everybody. And right. the thing about all cowboys, the, the thing about cowboys is everybody loves a cowboy. It's right. the cowboys are sexy. Right. Everybody <laughs> wants. That's right. Everybody wants. And like black you say, every, everybody's it's played cool. cowboys and Indians. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're male or female. I mean, it's so Absolutely. funny. The, it's so funny at the Cowboys of Color Rodeo because we kind of have, we have two audiences. We have two contestants. Now with our audience, we have the audience that comes to see the rodeo. And then we have those that come to be seen at the rodeo. Yes. Yeah, and they yeah. got, you know, they, they got dressed up, you know, it's that one or two times a year. They're all dressed up fancy. Yeah. They got their shirts, their boots, their hats. They walk yeah. up and down and walk up and down in front of people. And they got so mad as it one year because they used to be able to make like a U. They could go down to one side and go across and walk up the other side. And then we blocked them where they couldn't <laughs> like go across. And they got so mad. Uh. <laughs> and, and then we had another guy who paid his entry fee. Like every time we had a rodeo, he paid his entry fee. And then he'd be over leaning against the wall. And he'd have on like a brace on his arm or a brace on his knee. Like he got hurt. He wasn't even a cowboy. Uh. He was like a dentist or something, but he oh, was really? there trying to pick up, you know, he was there trying uh, to pick up girls, you know, and yeah. he was just there, uh, he said, we don't well, care as long as you pay your entry fee, you can stand over there all day long. Yeah. You want Do to. what you want, yeah, yeah. And we, <laughs> we were blown away when we first walked into this, the, the, the arena to see so many black people dressed up as cowboys. I mean, it's their right. everyday outfits. And then we were just like, wow, how does, right. how comes people don't know about these uh, arenas, these, these shows? Why right. doesn't more people know about the show? Why don't people, more people know about it? Yeah. 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 yeah well, so, I was, we were just like, wow, it's just yeah. amazing. It's almost walking into a hidden world, a new right. world, of, you know, that's a secret world. So, yeah. As I yeah, said, it's fascinating sure. for us. Yeah. Well, that was great. Well, we appreciate it so much. You know, and part of it is it's not an inexpensive sport. You know, that's why you don't hear a lot mm. more about it. Like we do the Southwestern tour. Because the mm. problem for us is, I mean, we have people that call us that want us to come, you know, to Florida or to Tennessee or to New York or wherever. But the problem is when you start talking about traveling with people with horses and trailers and feed yeah. and, you know, all yeah. of a sudden, you know, your costs double or triple yeah. or quadruple, you know, depending on the length, the, you know. Whereas in Texas and Oklahoma, you know, we can do seven or eight rodeos within three or four or five hours, you know, drive. Mm. And we mm. have a lot more good cowboys here too. You know, we yeah, just yeah. we just don't have as many cowboys and we don't have the stock like we have, you know, here in Texas, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Wyoming, New Mexico, Colorado, you know, New Me in Arizona. Mm. Uh, you know, it's just, so that's part of the reason why more people don't know and we don't have more shows yeah. um, because of the cost, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. but now, but with video and with, uh, you know, and the internet and things, we have that opportunity to at least share some of these stories. So I appreciate you so much that you would come and share your story. Do you uh, tell people how they can get in contact with you, John, because you do have some photographs for sale and things like that too, don't you? And Oh yeah, I think happens. you got. I think you got my details on there. I'm I'm, I'm a bit behind there. Uh, I've got right. a Facebook 
Facebook page, uh, Cowboy page, which is basically all American now. And right. I've got my, my um, website. You can see the details there. Okay. All so my details are okay. photo. And then on that, they com. can actually click on the Cowboy, Forgotten Cowboy. Yeah. Or... Yeah. yeah. They can pick all these pages, all these inf information is all written on the bottom of this um, page okay. now. You can get in contact with me. You can see some of my work and you can even buy some of the prints as well. Right. Um, right. I've also got a website somewhere um, with the prints on them. So, right, but, right. Uh, well, and we'll do that. Like you say, we'll put some of that stuff in the show notes. What was the What was the most surprising thing for you? Was it just the number? Was it just the number of cowboys, or was there uh, was there somebody specifically that you met that you had seemed to be the most impactful? Or um, the most surprising thing. The most surprising thing was that it was so 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 big, so vast, so mm -hmm. many cowboys in so many different counties, and right. and totally unheard of, totally right. unheard of. No, nobody gave them any second quarter until uh, after we finished. I saw so many photographers go out to the Texas right. and and the South and to she... do to, to do a follow up, <laughs> right. and so many people okay. ringing me up, ringing me up, and emailing me saying, "Can we? Yeah. Can I get your contacts? Can I go and photograph these cowboys?" Right. And I say, well, I said, you know, they're out there, you, you, and I'm in the UK, right? You know, and, they're, and, they're, and they're calling me. I said, <laughs> right. you have to do is, all you have to do is do the same as me, go down there and check them out, and I'm sure they'll be hospitable and um, give you the time of day, and you can photograph them and do whatever you want. But um, right. yes, it was amazing, uh, amazing few years after uh, my initial trip to America. Right, right. Well, and our hope is that you can come back. Uh, as we know, that very last cowboy you saw there that said, come back and find find me, that was Mr. Hearn. He's the founder mm -hmm. of the rodeo. Mm -hmm. um, he's 83, so he retired a couple of years ago from, from roping. He actually just retired in the last couple of months from Cowboys of Color, and his boys are taking over. He had four boys that all went to school on rodeo scholarships and have worked in the business with him all these years. They just kind of always been working behind the scenes and Cleo was kind of always the front man. You know, he always did all the inter most of the interviews and did most of the conversation and the talking and Kevin, like you saw there, that was Kevin Woodson, the gentleman, the bald headed gentleman with the red shirt that was talking mm. about the history. He's our rodeo announcer and he was on the show a couple of weeks ago. So you can go back and watch that footage. Um, but that's mm. it. And, and most people would say, I think that people are so friendly. That, yeah. you know, anytime you ask somebody for an interview or a picture, you know, they were happy to participate, weren't they? I think most of them. Yeah, uh, of course. There and... They were more than happy to participate and get involved in my project. I think it's really important for, the, for them to do it as well, because for the younger generations of people, or black kids and uh, young black people who didn't know much about the, the, cowboy, the black cowboy history, it's really important that they got their message out and their story out. When I initially wanted to do a book, I'm still thinking in the in the midst of doing a book with the Black Cowboys, right? Um, right. Because I think it's a really good edu well, educational. I think it's a really good educational piece, um, right? Uh, and story that needs to be told and given to Black kids, especially in the UK and around Europe. You right. Know, so I I really want to get on with that and do that. So okay. just trying to find the right publisher for the for the book is, well, is the uh, hardest you, thing. You might have found her. <laughs> well, let's hope so. There's a well, there's a publisher out there. My, to, I, the my day job is publishing. You know, that's my other job. This is actually my yeah. side job. You know, rodeo is actually kind of been my side job for 25, 30 years. But, oh, uh, so we're sitting right under my nose, Liz. That's you right. Know? Yeah, I didn't yeah, know that. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, be chat, we'll chat about that all site here mm. a little bit. But yeah, but I, I appreciate it so much. And the film is there. You can, um, you can see the promo. John actually has a, a 20 minute documentary film that's also available, and you'll be able to find that um mm -hmm. at his uh either That's his right. photography yeah. site or on mm -hmm. his facebook site places like that there'll be links uh, if you want to look into that john ferguson photo that's j-o-h-n-f-e-r-g-u-s-o-n photo a p-h-o-t-o -O, no s Small john piece. ferguson photo just in case mm -hmm. somebody's just listening to the audio because this also is a podcast that's going to drop and so uh, in addition to our live stream here. So, um, John, what would you do? What would you tell somebody if there's a kid or there's a person or adult or somebody that's out there listening and they wanted to know more uh, or they wanted to, like, look into this lifestyle even? What, what would you tell them? 
what would I tell them? Well, I'd tell them, go, learn how to ride and go for it. Find a mentor, find a cowboy. There's a great museum in uh, Oklahoma, the Cowboy uh -huh. Museum in Oklahoma, um, which you can get a... I don't know. You got it. I don't know. It's me or somebody else. I about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you do live? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a great um, museum in Oklahoma, the Cowboy Museum. I, right. I'm not sure. Yeah, the National that, Cowboy Museum and Hall of Fame. That's a fantastic museum to go and have a look at and check out the the cowboy history there, and then get involved in it. Once you get involved in it, you don't want to stop because there's so much intrigue stories history heritage legacy you can go on and on and on there's so many different stories that bounce off from the buffalo store buffalo soldiers to the, the the relationship with the with the native indians yeah to mm -hmm. um yeah there's, there's obviously the civil war the buffalo soldiers as i mentioned but there's so much more so you know i'm still fascinated by it or even the music that came out at that time right. as well and right and, yeah. and stuff so there's so much there to be had and listened to and, and 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 to find out about so yeah so go do it go educate yourself so we Absolutely. you heard it here you heard it from john ferguson a wonderful uh photographer from the uk and producer of this wonderful documentary the forgotten cowboy so we uh appreciate y'all listening here today next week we'll be back at five o'clock on thursday we'll be talking with koi poitia koi is a master gardener and an urban farmer and so he's going to be sharing about urban farming and um, how you can start a farm and and how that affects the community and things like that and in addition he's a musician and so he wrote some of the music for a Buffalo Soldier documentary that the Texas Parks and Wildlife did. That's how he got involved. He was a African-American from Florida who had never seen black cowboys until his mother moved to Texas. And then she said, you've got to come and go to the rodeo with us. And he was like, rodeo? Mm -hmm. what, what's a rodeo? You know, and and, uh, mm -hmm. and especially when she said the black rodeo, he was like, well, you ain't there black rodeos. There's not any black rodeos. He was from Florida yeah. and he didn't even know about yeah. it, you know, and yeah. he's, but he's a younger kid. I mean, he's probably, you know, 10, 15 years younger than us, but, uh, yeah. but anyway, so it is a great history. It's a great legacy. And we're just happy to be sharing that legacy. I appreciate you coming on and talking with us today, John, and letting us show your film, especially, um, people, if uh, they don't uh, weren't here live with us, they can always go back and uh, see the replay on YouTube. So this will get archived on our YouTube channel. So you, I will send you those Thanks, links right. too, and and you'll right. have access to that. And if you want copies, you know, we certainly be happy to share copies with you. So um, thank you for being here today, and we hope you have a great time. And we hope that you'll uh, we'll we'll talk offside about maybe coming back and working on yeah. that book and. Doing that book, yeah. Getting a second trip over here to uh, to America for sure. Third, third trip. Third, third trip. Oh, okay, yeah, it'll be yeah, the third yeah, time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be great. Yeah. Well, thanks maybe so do much, it in London. John. Maybe you can come to London and do it. Well, well that's the that's the other thing. Yeah. I need to be planning yeah. a few trips myself with my yeah. you know producer and photographer here. So uh, yeah, you got well, to get to London. It. Thanks so much for uh, listening today, for watching. Uh, again, you can go to wildwestdiversity.com, sign up for our e-newsletter, subscribe there, and you'll be able to see the written version of these stories. Uh, some more information is available there about John and about um, Jesse Stahl and Bo Eichert and Herb Jeffries and Cleo Hearn, all of these cowboys that we've been talking about. And we hope that you'll come back each Thursday at five o'clock here on the live stream on YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook. And um, hear these stories with us and see these living legends and hear about these historical legends. So thanks so much for watching. This is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, and we'll see you on the trail. Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the trail.